Hello everyone, and yeah, long time no see y'all, but I finally got back to this channel, and today I will make a full analysis of the recently released fifth part of the 39th episode of the Skibidi Toilet Multiverse for you, and I will make it as detailed and interesting as possible. So in this video, I will find all the secrets and Easter eggs that were hidden in this episode, as well as answer some really important questions that you might have. What abilities does Male 07 possess? And how did he get them in the first place? Will the Skibidi Toilets be able to join forces with the Alliance? Well, now get your tea and snacks ready and prepare to watch this video to the end, because it will be very interesting. Let's go! Okay, so the fifth part begins at the place where the Rolex Head Clock and the commander of the Skibidi Toilets started their fight, and immediately in the first frames we see a new ability of the main Skibidi Mutant, namely, how he can shoot lasers from his eyes. However, as you most likely noticed, this is unlike ordinary lasers that we usually saw in the movies or wherever else. They are black in color, and I assume that these black rays consist of teleportation fog. This can be seen in the frame where Clockman blocks this blow. Immediately after that, the commander who has broken his opponent's shield sucks up the fragments of this shield and makes some kind of Rasengan straight out of Naruto anime series or something like that. However, Clockman managed to block this technique, after which Rolex opens a portal to another dimension, and they teleport directly into the universe of Skibidi Zombies, in which Skibidi Toilets and the Alliance has joined together to counter the threat of the zombie virus. As soon as the mutant Skibidi was in the crowd of zombies, he rose into the air and then destroyed them with his black laser. And I don't know why, but it reminded me of a moment from the TV series called The Boys when Homelander did something really similar. At this moment, the kind version of G-Man Toilet falls next to Clockman, to whom Rolex compliments, but Skibidi does not stay long and quickly goes to the aid of Titan Clockman, who at this time is fighting with the infected Titan TV Man and a zombie Skibidi, and here he can barely hold them back with his time-stopping power. And while this is happening, the time agent is bitten by a zombie cameraman, but for him this bite turned out to be not particularly dangerous as for other characters, because with the ability to control time, he rewinds time for himself, after which he throws away the infected creature with a click, and then we go to the next dimension, and this time it's Skibidi Wars. The events that we see here took place in the first part of episode 104, when two titans cross their beams, so to speak. And the commander with the Rolex head clock began to do the same thing. And as for me, this is a reference to one of the Harry Potter films, when in fact Harry Potter himself and Voldemort tried to destroy each other in the same way. Next Clockman suggests that the Green Titan joins the Skibidi multiverse, but unfortunately we did not hear an answer because the Skibidi mutant pushes Clockman back to his native dimension. What a pity. Maybe this guy could take a real part in the events of this series. Although maybe all is not lost yet and we can still see. Well, after Clockman and Skibidi are back in the same place as at the beginning, the most interesting thing begins. Because Rolex tells his opponent that they need to stop it. Because they have one common enemy. And most likely you all understood that he means the Alpha Master, who plans to take over this world. However, I think that besides him, Clockman implies a slightly different kind of threat, however it is too early to talk about this. But I made some assumptions about this in one of my videos when I analyzed the episode with the birth of the Rolex head clock. So while this Clockman was trying to explain to the toilet what might happen in the future, the commander prescribed him a tasty bream destroying his head. And at this moment, on the sleeve of the Skibidi, you can see the inscription in Russian which can be translated as destroy which was in fact exactly what he just did. And this is probably his motto in life, but let's continue. Having mocked Clockman with the words, that is what you get for yapping in the middle of the fight. The commander is about to leave this place, but a rather curious scene begins before our eyes. Clockman's spirit comes out of his body or something and starts repairing his body. And I suspect that this spirit is similar to those spirits that we saw near the improved Titan Clockman when he crushed the Alpha. However, since the Rolex has incredible power, even with a destroyed body it can affect the world without the help of Titan Clockman, and in this regard I have an interesting theory that I will tell you about in the following videos. Anyway, this guy is rebuilding his body and angrily attacking the Skibidi, 
using new skills that we haven't seen, and one of them strongly reminded me of the Van Punch Man skill from the TV series of the same name, this skill called Sequential Normal Punches. Eventually, they end up in the dome and using a shadow copy technique or something like that. Clockman locks Skibidi in a bubble inside of which the time is stopped. And he says that he used the second level time stop because the commander is immune to the first level. But the interesting thing here is that the commander, despite the fact that time was stopped for him, can still talk. And I'm not sure that this is how it should be. This clearly indicates that the commander is able to resist this time stoppage and I do not know why Rolex did not attach importance to this. And in the end, the commander manages to destroy this barrier, but he spent a lot of effort on it and started coughing up some kind of black goo, which apparently gave him the abilities that we saw in this episode, including the ability to resist the clockmen, I think. Also, another interesting detail that can be noticed in the dome is that everything in it loses color. However, the colors are still present around the clockmen because the influence of the dome does not apply to them, apparently. So Rolex finally decides to inform the mutant Skibidi that Bethany is alive, and I suspect that he did this in order to gain the commander's trust so that he could join forces with him in the future against the threat that he mentioned earlier. After listening to Clockman, the commander immediately leaves this place to find his daughter, and just at this moment, the alarm clockman reports that he tore out all the wires he could find, and therefore the missiles will now not be able to launch themselves. And so finally, Titan Clockman turns off his time dome and becomes free, which will allow him to finally help his friends in the following episodes who are bogged down in the battle near the last Skibidi base. At the end of the episode, the alarm clockman and Titan exchange pleasantries in honor of the completed task that they have been trying to solve for several episodes. At this time, the Rolex head clock flies up to them, and based on the way Alarm and Titan began to look at each other, as well as by the way Titan Clockman began to look at the time agent, they clearly do not understand why the commander of the Skibidi toilets was simply released. But as I said earlier, this guy clearly has a plan to unite the forces of the Skibidi toilets and the Alliance, because he must know what awaits them in the future. And in order to counter the growing threat, he decided to gain the trust of Male 07 and told him that his daughter was alive after what the Pencilman did in the last human shelter, and in the next episodes we will see the unification of this family anyway. And after that, I am sure that the Commander will reconsider some of his plans and soon we will finally see what I have been talking about for so many videos. And that was all for today. Well, if you don't want to miss a lot of interesting videos that I have already prepared for you, be sure that you have liked this video and subscribed to my channel. And it was me, Iso Chad. See ya!